Good morning, all. Well, this week starts a very special holiday called Passover. And I'm not going to really talk about that much today. But if you want to know more about it, we are having a whole Passover Seder with commentary by me this Saturday, this Saturday at 4 o'clock p.m. And if you plan on coming, please let us know so we know how much food to prepare. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about that. But tell your friends, your relatives, everybody. The more the merrier. My message this morning is entitled The New Kingdom with the subtitle The Great Impersonator. So, hallelujah. Let's start with prayer. Heavenly Father, oh, there's so much happening in the world today, in the world, in this country. <sighs> all around us and our families. It's all happening, and it's happening faster and faster. And as your scripture says, Lord, the uh, birth pangs, it's stronger and faster. It's all happening. I just pray, Lord, that this message would truly be inspired with your words and your thoughts that would come through my lips, and that uh, you'd open up our ears and our heart to understand and Lord, I really feel this is an important message, and I ask you, Lord, that it would get propagated to all those who need to hear it. We pray in your name, amen. <clears throat> is anyone familiar or heard of the book, the novel 1984? <laughs> yeah, way back when it was required reading in school. Um, it was published in 8 June 1949, 75 years ago. Uh, they even made a movie about it, which personally I think is not nearly as good as the book. And it's become a classic, but more than a classic. It's an eerie prediction of the world we live in today. Uh, there's terms from that book that we use commonly today, but they were first, you know, created from that book, like Orwellian. Have you heard of Big Brother? Big Brother's watching you? It's from that book. Thought Police, Ministry of Truth, oh, so many others, all from that book. And here's a couple of quotes from this book, <clears throat> just to tell you how. Things have changed or not changed. Uh, quote number one, every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book has been rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists, exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. Another quote, if all others accept the lie which the party imposed, if all records told the same tale, then the lie is passed into history and becomes truth. Who controls the past, ran the party slogan, controls the future, and who controls the present controls the past. Any of that sound familiar? Ring a bell? That was written 75 years ago, but it's happening even now. The past becomes the future, becomes the now. Now, how was Orwell able to predict the future so accurately? I always thought that the established leaders and big shots of today used that book as a roadmap. They would think, oh, that's a great idea, let's do that. But now, I believe, Orwell actually had some inside information about things that were being planned and already in the works. Now, the reality, it's been slowly growing, but now it's become more and more obvious. 
But it really began long ago, long before that. Actually, since the beginning of time, these plans have been in place. I'd like to read from the beginning of time. Genesis chapter 2, just a couple of verses. Genesis chapter 2, starting verse seven, uh, 15. The Lord God took the man, gave him rest into the Garden of Eden in order to cultivate it and watch over it. The Lord God commanded the man, saying, Now from all the trees of the garden you're most welcome to eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you must not eat. For when you eat of it, you most assuredly will die. Well, <clears throat> it's pretty clear. Uh, moving on, the next chapter, chapter 3, verse 1. The serpent was more crafty than any animal of the field that the Lord had made. So the serpent said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from all the trees of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, well, of the trees, the fruit trees, we can eat. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the middle of the garden, God said, you must not eat it and you must not touch it or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, Oh, you most assured, assuredly will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So that's where sin begins. Not only doubting the word of God. Did God really say that? But disobeying God and wanting to be like God. See how these thoughts get planted into her head? And God never said you can't touch it. But that's how things get propagated. So you can't look at it, you can't touch it, you can't know anything about it, or you'll die. Well, it's not quite what God said, but he did say don't eat it, and she disobeyed. Satan is a great liar, a great deceiver. He causes you to doubt, causes you to sin by disobeying God, and tells you, hey, you can be like God. Yes, whatever you want, I'll give to you. Satan knows he isn't God, he can't be God, so he tries to impersonate God. He attempts to replace everything that God had established. He replaces it with an evil substitute. <clears throat> he wants to ruin God's creation. He actually managed so well that God had to destroy everyone and everything on the earth, except for those who were in the ark. And afterwards, God gave some promises and some commands to Noah. Genesis chapter 9. God blessed Noah and his sons. He said to them, now be fruitful and multiply and fill the whole earth. The fear and terror of you will be on every wild animal and every flying creature of the sky, everything that crawls on the ground and with all the fish of the sea into your hands I'm giving you. Every crawling thing that's alive will be food for you, just as are the green plants. And now I've given you everything. Only flesh with its life, that is the blood, you must not eat. Surely your lifeblood will I avenge. And from every animal and from every person, I'll avenge it. From everyone's brothers, I will avenge that person's life. The one who sheds human blood, by human his blood will be shed. For God's, in God's image he made humanity. As for you... Be fruitful and multiply. Flourish in the land and multiply it. And God said to Noah and to his son, saying, Now look, I'm about to establish my covenant with you 
and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that's with you, including all the flying creatures and livestock and every wild animal with you, and all that, everything coming out of the ark, every animal on the earth. I will confirm my covenant with you, and never again will all flesh be cut off by waters of the flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the land. And God said, now this is the sign of the covenant that I'm making between me and you and every living creature that's with you for all future generations. My rainbow I'm putting into the clouds and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and the land. And whenever I bring clouds over the land, the rainbow will appear in the clouds and I will remember my covenant that's between me and you and every living thing of all flesh. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all flesh. And when the rainbow is there in the clouds, I will look at it and I will remember the perpetual covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that's on the land. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I confirmed between me and all flesh that's in the land. Okay, well, two thing, one command, one promise. The command, be fruitful and multiply and fill the whole earth. Pretty simple. Sounds like something we shouldn't have any problem doing. Uh, one promise, a rainbow after every rain. But instead of being fruitful, today the masses want abortion on demand. They want to kill everything that they don't like. World leaders have now gone on record saying they want to depopulate the earth. It's the only way to save humanity is to kill everyone. They use methods like viruses and drugs and uh, they have all kinds of plans. Today, the murderers are accepted into society without question. And if they should happen to get caught and arrested, they're released the next day. Um, if you try to stop them, then you'll spend the rest of your life in jail. Um, and make no mistake, this is the devil's plan. He wants to destroy and ruin everything God said. God says, be fruitful and multiply. And the devil says, oh, I'll make sure you can't be fruitful. You can't multiply. He comes to steal and kill and destroy. Sin is to be against God and to be against everything God has said and everything God has done. And that's the devil's plan. Not only to convince us to sin by doing these things, but he goes further. Oh, it's your right to kill and destroy and disobey God. How dare anyone try to stop you? And God also promised a rainbow. As a reminder, he will not again destroy the earth by flood because of sin. Why did he destroy the world? Because it was so corrupt. There was no hope for it anymore. Destroy it all. Today, the rainbow flag is not a promise of what God has done and God's goodness. It's become a badge of sin, a universal symbol of hope. And by their own writings, a symbol of hope and inclusion for the LGBTQIA plus people around the world. You need the plus there because there's always some new perversion that they want to glorify. I'm waiting for them to add a P for pedophilia because they claim that that's natural and a human right. The very things that caused God to destroy this earth with a flood are the things that they're promoting. They're proud of it. They have their own flag and they wave it. This flag's been around for quite a while. The very first flag flew in San Francisco's United Nations Plaza. It was on Gay Pride Day on June 25, 1978. 
and just a little bit of history, it was designed by Gilbert Baker, who was a gay artist and activist in San Francisco. He was only 27 years old, and he was asked by his friend Harvey Milk, you've probably heard that name. He was the first openly gay elected official in California, and he was uh, asked to design a symbol for what was then commonly referred to as the gay community. Now, it's the LGBTQIA plus community. So all sin is now welcome and something to be proud about. How will this all end? When will this all end? Well, there's hope. We're told about it in the scriptures. If you want to turn to Revelations chapter 13. Then I saw a beast rising out of the sea. It had ten horns and seven heads. And on his horns were ten royal crowns. And upon his heads were slanderous names. Now the beast that I saw, it was like a leopard. But his feet were like a bear, and his mouth was like a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his throne, and great authority. And one of his heads seemed to have been slain, uh, but the fatal wound was healed. And the whole earth was amazed and followed the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, because he had given authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, chanting, Who is like the beast? Who could make war against him? And the beast was given a mouth to utter great boasts and blasphemies. It was given authority to act for 42 months, and then he opened his mouth with blasphemies against God to slander his name and his tabernacle, that is, those dwelling in heaven. He also was permitted to make war against all the righteous ones and overcome them. And he was given authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation. All who dwell on the earth should worship him. Everyone whose name was not written from the foundation of the world in the Lamb's book of life who was slain. <clears throat> so everyone on earth will worship the beast except for those written in the Lamb's book of life. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is meant for captivity, then to captivity he'll go. If anyone is to be killed by the sword, then by the sword he must be killed. Here is the perseverance and faith of the righteous ones. When I saw another beast rising out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, but he spoke like a dragon. He exercises all the authority of the first beast before him, and he makes the earth and all those who dwell in it worship the first beast before him, uh, the first beast whose fatal wound was healed. He performs great signs. He can even make fire come down from heaven in the sight of men, and he deceives those who dwell on the earth through all the signs he's permitted to perform telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image in honor of the beast who has the sword wound but still lives. The second beast was permitted to give life to the image of the first beast. So the image of the beast could even speak and cause all who would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He also causes all, small and great and rich and poor and free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead. So no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Well, that's pretty clear. But uh, that's all fantasy, right? That's not going to happen except it's already happening. So many things that are revealed in this passage. The devil wants us to worship the beast, but not God. If you don't worship the beast, you'll be killed. Are you worshiping the beast? Or is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Because there is no other choice. You can't sit there on the sidelines saying, hmm, I haven't decided yet. 
Either your name is written in the book of life or you're worshiping the beast. And how does your name get written there? The Lamb's book of life, the Lamb that was slain, Yeshua. You have to give your heart, your soul, your body to him. Confess your sins and he will take them away and he will write your name in the book of life. Deuteronomy chapter 5, starting verse 6, is pretty clear. This is God saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Look at where you came from. And you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that's in heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. I'll visit the inequity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but I'll show mercy to the thousands, to those who love me and will keep my commandments. That's pretty clear. You are to worship only the Lord, your God. Oh, just to make sure that it sinks in. <clears throat> he repeats it in chapter 11, starting verse 13. It'll come about if you listen obediently to my commands, which I'm commanding you today, to love the Lord, your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. He'll provide rain for you in your season, earlies and late rains, so that you can gather your grain, your new wine, your oil, and you will also provide grass in your field for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Now beware that your hearts are not easily deceived. You do not turn away and serve other gods and worship them. Otherwise, the anger of the Lord will be kindled against you, and he will shut up the sky so that there will be no rain. <coughs> Excuse me. The ground will not yield its produce, and you will quickly perish from the good land which the Lord is giving you. You shall therefore take these words of mine to heart and to soul. You shall tie them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be frontlets on your forehead. You shall also teach them to your sons and speak them when you sit in your house and when you walk along the road, and when you lie down, when you get up. You'll write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates, uh, sticky notes everywhere. So that your days and the days of your sons may be increased on the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, swore to your fathers to give them as long as the heavens are above the earth. That's a pretty long time. The word of God must be on your heart and in your head all the time. You know, I grew up and I had to put the little boxes with the scriptures and I'd wrap it around my arm and around my head and say the special prayers. Um, but that's just an outward sign of what needs to be on the inside. It has to be in your mind and in your heart all the time. Everywhere you go, you walk out of the house, you walk into the house, you need to be reminded the word of God. It's got to be in your life constantly and teach it to your kids. The main issue with society today and the children is that uh, is, is, is that it, 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 you don't teach the kids. They don't hear it. They don't know it. And that's the devil's plan. Instead of worshiping God, he wants us to worship the beast. The imitation. He's the great deceiver. He tells you, oh, this is good. This is the real thing. Gee, Children of Israel have just left Egypt. They're wandering in the wilderness. God has Moses go up to the top of the mountain to give him the law. Oh, here you go. I'm going to tell you how to rule your people. And he's saying right there, write it down. I'm the Lord your God. Have no other gods before me. And meanwhile, what are the people doing? His own brother Aaron built a golden calf. All the, the jewelry and everything they stole from Egypt it was meant to be a blessing, and they turned it into something that they would worship. 
And Moses came down, and I like to say he was the worst sinner in the Bible because he broke all ten commandments at once. Crash! <laughs> and he made them grind up the golden calf and eat it. Um, yeah, the devil is the great deceiver, the great impersonator. He's saying, oh, this is better than what God says. Did God really say that? No, I got something better in mind. That's the devil. And we have to learn to ignore his voice and to listen to the word of God always. Amen. One more. There's plenty, but I'll just read one more. Exodus chapter 13. Children of Israel uh, are getting ready to leave Egypt. God is giving them instructions, commandments. For seven days you'll eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day there'll be a great feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten throughout the seven days. And nothing with yeast will be seen even among you. Nor any dough with yeast will be seen among you in all of your borders. And you'll tell your sons on that day, saying, because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. You know, it's interesting. It's not uh, when your ancestors came out of Egypt. It's when I came out of Egypt. We all have our Egypt. We all have our bondage. God has taken us all out of Egypt. And it shall serve as a sign to you on your hand and as a reminder on your forehead that the law of the Lord would be in your mouth, and with a powerful hand the Lord brought you out of Egypt. Therefore, you'll keep this ordinance at its appointed time every year. Wow, this blew my mind when I found it this week. That this commandment to sign it on your hand and on your forehead was actually part of the Passover commandments. It's everywhere. God wants the law to be in our minds and in our mouth everywhere we go. Uh, but the devil says, no, 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 no. We're going to put the mark of the beast on your hand and on your forehead. We're going to put you back into slavery because you're not going to be able to eat or buy anything unless that mark is there. God set us free from slavery, but the devil's plan has always been to enslave us. And instead of reminding of his God and his word, he wants, the devil wants to remind us of the beast. Instead of freedom from slavery, it's now the source of slavery. Because we no longer can worship the living God with all our heart and soul and strength. And instead, we have to depend upon the things of this world for our salvation and luminous. That's the devil's plan. That's his deception and uh, why he's the great impersonator. Let's move on. The news today. This is not just history. This is happening today. There's many things happening today that are in the news. It's just more examples of how it's really the devil behind it all. We think how evil Congress is. You know, they just voted to, to um, perpetuate this VISA law where they can spy on anybody for any reason without even telling you or telling a judge. They're giving more and more money to Ukraine and to these other countries to help them um, and yet refuse. You know, they were going to impeach the... Uh, the head of Homeland Security for the travesty of what's going on in our borders. But he was impeached by Congress, but the senators refused to even listen to any testimony. They just outright dismissed it. From what I heard, not one Democrat was there in the Senate to listen to any testimony or vote one way or the other. It's all against everything that God had established when he created this country. But it's happening today. That's the news. Um, 
many things are happening and how the devil wants to replace God and control us. And yet, it's new but not new. Jeremiah chapter 31, starting verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It's not going to be like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. It was my covenant and they broke it, although I was a husband to them, declares the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make at the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God. They shall be my people. They will not need to teach anyone again, his neighbor and each one his brother, saying, you should know the Lord, because they'll already know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares the Lord. For I will forgive all their wrongdoing and their sins. I will remember no more. This is what the Lord God says. He who gives the sun for light by day and the fixed order of the moon and the stars for light by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves will roar. The Lord of armies is his name. If this fixed order can depart from me, declares the Lord, then the descendants of Israel will also cease to be a nation before me forever. And this is what the Lord says, if the heavens above can be measured, if the foundations of the earth searched out below, then I can reject all the descendants of Israel for everything that they've done, declares the Lord. So Israel, God has his eyes on Israel. He's promised to protect it. And yet, what do we see happening even now? There was a new covenant that would be written in our hearts and our minds, and that has actually been fulfilled already by Messiah Yeshua. If you are a follower of Yeshua, you have the Spirit of God in you, and you have the Word of God. You have the mark of the Lord, and you don't need the mark of the beast. And God's promise is to protect Israel, but since the beginning of time, the devil has tried to destroy Israel. And all throughout scriptures, and even in modern history, we read again and again about people and nations that want to destroy the Jewish people. Even today, even today, Israel is at war with all the surrounding nations who are trying to destroy her. But God's not going to allow it to happen. You have to remove all the stars and the moon for that to happen. So what's happening today is bad, but it's not yet the end. Now, here's some interesting insight from Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, starting in the first verse. The first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and visions in his mind as he lay in his bed, and he wrote down the dream, and he told the following summary of it. Daniel said, I was looking in my vision by night, and behold... The four winds of heaven were stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts were coming up out of the sea. They were different from one another. The first one was like a lion, but it had wings of an eagle. I kept looking until its wings were plucked. And it was lifted up from the ground and set up on two feet like a man. And a human mind was given to it. And behold, another beast and a second one resembling a bear. It was raised up on one side, and there were three ribs in its mouth between its teeth. And they said to this, Arise, devour much meat. And after I kept looking, and behold, another one was like a leopard, which had its back four wings of a bird, and the beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. And after this I kept looking in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and extremely strong and it had large iron teeth and it devoured and crushed and trampled down the remainder with its feet and it was different from all the other beasts that were before it because it had ten horns and while I was thinking about the horns behold there was another horn it was a little one it came up from among them and the three of the previous horns were plucked out before it and behold the horn possessed eyes like human eyes and a mouth was uttering great boasts and blasphemies. 
uh, kept looking until the thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His garment was as white as snow. The hair of his head was like pure wool, and the throne was ablaze with flames, and its wheels were burning with fire, and a river of fire was flowing and coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands were serving him. Myriads upon myriads were standing before him, and there was a court convened, and the books were opened. And I kept looking because of the sound of the boastful words that the horn was speaking. I kept looking until the beast was killed and its body was destroyed and given to the burning fire. And as for the rest of the beasts, their dominion was taken away, but an extension of life was granted to them for an appointed period of time. I kept looking in the night visions and behold, the clouds of heaven, there was one like a son of man coming. And he came up to the Ancient of Days, and he was presented before him, and to him was given dominion and honor and a kingdom, so that all peoples, nations, populations of all languages might serve him, and his dominion will be an everlasting dominion which will never pass away. His kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. Skipping down to verse 19. And I desire to know the exact meaning of this fourth beast, which was different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze. It devoured and crushed and trampled down the remainder with its feet and the meaning of the ten horns which were on its head and the other horn which came up before which the three of the horns fell, namely the horn which had eyes and a mouth uttering great boasts which was larger in appearance than its associates. And I kept looking, and that horn was waging war with the saints and prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the highest one. And the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. And this is what he said. The fourth beast will be a fourth kingdom on the earth, which will be different from all other kingdoms. It will devour the whole earth. It will trample it down and crush it. As for the ten horns out of this kingdom, ten kings will arise, and another one will arise after them. He will be different from the previous ones and will humble three kings. And he will speak against the Most High and wear down the saints of the highest one. And he will intend to make alterations in times and in law. I have that highlighted. He will attend, he will plan to make alterations in times and in law. And they will be handed over to him for a time, in times, and half a time. But the court will convene for judgment. His dominion will be taken away. It will be annihilated and destroyed forever. And the sovereignty, the dominion, the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints of the highest one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and all empires will serve him and obey him. Wow. That's a lot to digest. You could preach a whole week on that. Sounds like it's coming right out of the book of Revelations. But actually, the book of Revelations is coming right out of Daniel. God promised a new kingdom, a new covenant, a new heaven and a new earth where God is in charge. Uh, but that's not the devil's plans. No, the devil wants to do it his way. You hear in the news these days about one world government. Yeah, it's a fantasy, it's a future. No, 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 no. Not only is it today, it's always been. It's always been the devil's plan. It started in Genesis with the Tower of Babel, and it ends in Revelation, Genesis chapter 11. The entire earth had the same language. This is right after the flood. And they all had the same vocabulary. And when they traveled eastward, they found a valley plain in the land of Shinar, and he settled there. 
And they said to one another, come, let's make bricks and bake them till they're hard. So they used bricks for stone and tar for mortar. And they said, come on, let's build ourselves a city with a tower whose top reaches into heaven. So, and let's make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we'll be scattered all over the face of the whole land. What was God's commandment to Noah? Be fruitful and multiply and fill the whole land. Oh, we don't want to do what God said. No, 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 no. Let's make a name for ourselves so we can be great. And Adonai came down to see the city and the tower that the sons of men had built. And Adonai said, look what the people are done. They're all one. They all have the same language. And this is what they've begun to do. Now, nothing that they plan to do is going to be impossible. So come on, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other's language. So Adonai scattered them from over there, over the face of the entire land. They stopped building the city. And that's why it's called Babel. Because they were all babbling. Adonai confused the language of the entire world. And from there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the entire world. Well, that's what he told them to do in the first place. God said, multiply and fill the earth. Instead, they wanted to build a tower to God. And God scattered them throughout the earth, which is what he told them to do. Again and again in history, there's empires that try to rule the world. And even today, we have the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, NATO, the World Bank, many other organizations, world leaders, and rich people who want to be leaders. And, oh, the World Health Organization, thank you. Oh, there's so many others. Uh, they have one goal in mind and one goal in common, one world government. It's not new. Daniel wrote about it. Revelation wrote about it. Don't be surprised when you see it happening now before your own eyes. But it's a false kingdom. It's a deception. It's not the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom of the beast. He wants you to live in it. Oh, there's a lot of other crazy things in the news today. Have you heard of AI, artificial intelligence, computers that learn? I have a friend in the early 80s, he, a computer genius, he created AI. I don't know if he'll ever get credit for creating it, but uh, he wrote a program that can write programs. He told it to write itself, and it did. So it kept improving and improving. Uh, people wouldn't believe him, so it never really caught on. But today, artificial intelligence is the, the talk of the town. Computers that learn, computers and machines, that is robots, they can imitate humans, even look like humans, and they can even be better than humans. Some experts say, and even if you talk to the AI, chat boxes themselves, they'll say that they can take over the world. For many, many decades, many, many movies has exploited this idea of the machines taking over the world, of the computers, of AI. Think of the Terminator and so many others. But in like 1984, it's not fantasy, it's real. It's been planned for many years. Robots are real that look and talk and sound like humans. You know, recently, actors and writers were on strike for over a year. The main reason was because of AI. They wanted some assurances that they weren't going to be replaced by a computer. And even the robots are on record as wanting to take over humanity. Elon Musk often talks about transhumanism. Have you ever heard of that term? Computer chips implanted in humans that can control their will and their movements. Yeah, it's real today. It's already happening. It's just like we read about in Revelations. Many people today, and I believe it, the beast could easily be AI. Yep. 
it's all part of the devil's plan to control the world and the people. Everyone would worship him. God's plan is to give us the Holy Spirit and the power of God, which is even greater than the devil. Uh, so the devil wants to build his one world kingdom, but God has other plans. A couple more scriptures. Revelations chapter 14, starting verse six. I saw another angel flying high in the sky having a timeless message of the gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation and tribe and tongue and people, he said in a loud voice, fear God, give him glory. The hour of his judgment has come. Worship the one who made heaven and earth and the sea and the springs of water. Another angel, a second one followed saying, oh, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She who made all the nations drink of the wine of the fury of immorality. Another angel, a third one, followed, saying in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives the mark on his forehead and on his hand, he'll drink the wine of God's wrath, poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone before the holy angels and before the Lamb. The smoke of their torment will go up forever and ever. Those who worship the beast and his image and those who receive the mark of his name have no rest day or night. Now here is the perseverance, the truth of the saints. Those who keep the commandment of God and the faith of Yeshua. In Revelations 21, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Remember God's promise? As long as there's a heaven above the earth, but heaven and earth have passed away now. So it's something new, a new kingdom. I saw a new city, the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is now among men. He shall tabble among them, tabernacle among them. They'll be his people. God himself shall be among them and be their God. He shall wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. There shall be no more crying or mourning or pain any longer, for the former things have all passed away. <sighs> the one seated upon the throne, the one seated upon the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write down these words, because they're trustworthy and true. He said to me, It's done. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You know, I was looking at that saying, oh, that's interesting. Jesus on the cross, his last words were saying, it's done. But this is not the same Greek word. Uh, it's done, it's finished, it's over. That was on the cross. But now this word it's done means more it's started. It's begun. We've begun the process. It's done. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will freely give from the spring of water of life. And the one who overcomes shall inherit these things, and I will be his God. He will be my son and daughter, and for the cowardly and the faithless and the detestable and the murderers and sexually immoral and the sorcerers and the idolaters and every liar and deceiver, their lot is in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. That's the second death. It's done. It all comes down to who do you worship? Do you worship the beast, a.k.a. the devil, a.k.a. Satan, the accuser? Or do you worship the living God, Yeshua? And huh, it's one or the other. There's no in-between. If you're not worshiping God, you are worshiping the beast. Heavenly Father, oh, give us strength and wisdom, and may your holy words be on our lips, on our mind, and our heart always, 
so much so that when the devil gives his deceptions and his lies, we easily see it for what it is, and we can ignore it. And no matter how much pressure this world, which is owned by the devil, tries to put on us, ah, we have the power of the Spirit of God. We have the mark of the Lord within us. We don't need the beast. We have the Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that you help us to spread this gospel because there's still time but not much left before your wrath is poured out upon this evil generation. Lord, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for saving us, for taking us out of bondage and help us to never turn back. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I saw an interesting quote. It said, never look back unless that's the way you want to go. <laughs> Think about that. Thank you.